Go ahead and put your sexy one, Ron. Ron. Ron's got a sexy one. I like it. Play, play the sexy music, If Ron. he has it, if he has it. I don't know if he changed it up or not. Nope. You changed oh, yeah. it up? I know. Oh, I changed it up, guys. Sorry. Okay. Okay. We'll play the little... Dee, 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 dee. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> oh, you guys missed my hell am I doing here? Do you know? Um, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they don't know, huh? Creep. Oh no, I haven't sent them the video. Oh I, yeah, Chana straight up. Okay, it. well let's just go live. Let's All go right, live. Uh, let's we've go. actually been live for 30 seconds. Yeah, oh okay. Right. <laughs> right. Seventeen people watching. Yeah, there it is. Everybody, Whoa. everybody was just watching Joe Whoa. back there thinking and. There it is. <laughs> Who's the host today? I wasn't going to say nothing. I'm, I'm the host just today. What is up, everybody? What is going on? Chana D, your techno dad here on behalf of Daily Hi-Fi. I welcome you to the Daily Hi-Fi podcast. We have Woo! four horsemen of Hi-Fi here in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Well, in our respective buildings across the country. We've got Michael, the youth man, Ron, the new record day, and Joe from Joe Intel. What is up, everybody? What's going What's on? What's going guys? on, man? Hello. What's up? up? What's up? Everybody's in the house. That makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Hadn't seen Ron in a little bit. Glad to have him back. Heck yeah. He's Feels been good. busy. I've been busy. I see what yeah. you've been busy doing, man. I What's know, behind you that. back there, brother? Like I think a, I I think I, I missed like my it. calling in life. I need to be like a studio designer for for YouTubers. Ooh, since I like it, man. So I, I like well, it. Might as well I love do it. this. <laughs> Chana's he's got his going on too, man. <laughs> I got the darkness happening over here. <laughs> so, in the dark back there. So for people who are listening to the audio version, Ron has this like cool little setup in the back. He does some pretty crazy woodworking stuff. So yeah. that's pretty awesome. So the set keeps on changing. Like every time we talk to him, it's a different set. And he has this custom wood and it's like, you know, painted his custom red color. It just looks awesome. He's got his candles going. I mean, he's Thank set up. You. He's even got a daily hi-fi show sign red bars right there. it looks like he's in a in like a beautiful prison i like, I like it studio. dude i like yeah, it like a full on. a beautiful cage there oh yeah he's, i'll i'll, I'll touch can't... this flame over here you guys watch <laughs> oh maurice is in the house oh, area that's how tough dude. i am what's up kyle what's going on people what's going on ces wrap up somebody's asking oh yeah we're gonna get all into that what were we saying right now we're just gonna just let's let's just mess around what, what were you saying right now chana about oh. Oh, About Vegas. What? Oh, so there's supposedly, supposedly there's this video surfaced about of me singing at 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 CES. Like, oh, oh snap! Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta post that on the oh. show floor. Um, <clears throat> it was funny. We were actually talking to uh, Klipsch, Jill from Klipsch, yep. and then I was always noticing there's some bad singing going on like near us and i was just like what is going on and then so there was this like booth right next to the clips booth where this company is i guess promoting their karaoke machine where you like plug your phone or ipad or tablet into the machine you plug in a mic and you can balance the levels both levels separately and then the master level and then it went out to some like big whatever weird looking speakers get um, to right? the point chana anyway <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little sick now. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, uh, singing Joe, preview. Uh oh, Joe singing was preview. Like, <laughs> Joe was like, "Hey, why don't you sing something?" I'm like, "Well, I can do either Piano Man by Billy Joel or Creep by Radiohead." And he's like, "Radiohead." <laughs> yeah. So he. Um, right, long story short, Chana D. God. Sorry. Long story short is that basically this dude comes up, starts singing at like, like with all his might. You can see he has his eyes closed the whole time, and he's like. Uh, like getting crazy on yeah, there. Dude. Yeah, no. Jill comes out from her booth because they're right next door, and she's like, all surprised. <laughs> and I caught her coming in yeah, looking man. all surprised. It was but, good. But uh, yeah, Chana's got some pipes, man. Wow. You ain't no joke, dude. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I host the karaoke every Tuesday. So there you I go. That was, so that was pretty awesome. I want to see that, that video. That was you on. Get, you get a couple in you and you start joining in with them, man. It's just all good. Well, none, that's the none part. in them. Usually, like I was shaking the whole time because normally I have like a beer or a right, that's pot what or something <laughs> like that to loosen up. But he's I like, did it. He's like, "We're going all natural, man." Uh, sample, sample. Somebody said they want a sample right here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, can't do it. It's so accurate. He'll probably get demonetized if he sings oh, that. Oh, oh look mercy. at that! Joe Intel has biceps. Or right, let's change oh. the subject real quick. <laughs> oh my god. 
what y'all didn't see is like right before we hit live, he's like flexing. He's like, guys, can y'all see my try in that? Is, <laughs> is, is this a good angle for the video, guys? Is this a good angle? That's what he was saying. <laughs> Which way to the restroom, guys? Oh, my God. <laughs> Which oh. way to the Daily Hi-Fi show, guys? <laughs> you know? uh, oh, man. I uh, hope next time that you guys can all go. It's just it's a lot of fun. I have a I feeling that the way it's going to work out is Michael and I are going to just be chilling in the hotel like doing like work or something <laughs> right we'll We're be probably gonna be video. working on something editing and then chana and uh and ron will probably be out getting some like the whiskey and like, they'll be clubbing it yeah, yeah doing something fun clubbing Club designated uh drinkers <laughs> right maybe Somehow i have a feeling like sound united will be uh in that mix too yeah you look out you don't want right. to get bronson like i did that's right dude they're they're a good group to hang out with man yeah, they they invited us out, and we're like, I was like, oh man, I don't know, I'm tired today. Oh, Did you yeah, see no, it? Really? We walked so much; it was a ridiculous amount of walking. Yeah, Joe yeah. had like 27 miles, and I had like 25 on our phones. Oh, are like, you serious? Wow! Because yeah. airport, you know what I mean. I had to walk the airport. Mm -hmm. Chana drove mm -hmm. in, my Uber drove in, drove in, so yeah. it was all good. Cool yeah, though, right? Dude. Yeah, it was fun. I had a I had a lot of fun. And I think like this time, you know, like I tried to kill myself last year and like I did mm -hmm. 21 videos and that was just yeah. it was just horrible. Joe's like, why don't you just do one video? So yeah, I'm still editing it. Dude, it's gonna be still fun. I don't know if you guys had a chance to check out Joe's channel, but he posted a video earlier today. Super well produced, man. Seriously. Oh, yeah. Let's drop yeah. that. Yeah, super, super dope. Here. Yeah, thank, thank you guys. Yeah, check thank that link guys. out yeah. later on. James I could have done that without hard. Chana, to be honest. Literally, it was because, very uh, well done. Um, it's just a great, even just a story. I really enjoyed it, man. Yeah, the just story, the way yeah. that you put it together. Yeah, yeah. it felt well, like a, a mini movie. It really yeah, did. It was absolutely awesome. sweet documentary, man. Thank you guys. I I was up all night, so I just woke up recently at like four to do this podcast. Uh, yeah, so I was up all night editing. But to be honest, I I couldn't have done it without uh. Chana, because it just goes to show, like when you have more than one person helping you, when you're not just by yourself, you can do so much more, right? Like yeah, we're yeah, used totally. to working by ourselves so much, sure. and mm -hmm. so when you have somebody else, like, hey, set up your the tripod and the lights and and the other camera, like, and you know it's going to be uh, okay. It just it allows you to do more, right? Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, so maybe next year we'll all forego. Yeah. Maybe we'll, let's set up something for Exponer or. or uh, or CD or something. I don't I'm, know. I'm planning, I, I, on, yeah. I'm planning on going to, to CD. I'm not sure about Exponent yet. So thinking about that. I'm going to have to pause myself real quick because I have UPS picking up a bunch of stuff real, real quick. One sec. <laughs> Every you're podcast picking you're picking second. up stuff. Dude. Yeah, I, I got some. Hey guys, I got something cool. I got to go check it out. Get some oh. new speakers, get some new headphones, new amplifier. Cotton one, Cotton Dude one said this This is the best thing that could have popped up on my feed. Uh oh. Appreciate it, man. Garage. Nice on ceiling sub box one of five. Now I have more motivation to do it, man. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, great. I like it, dude. I like it. Look at all them packages, man. Oh, this is just an opportunity for him to show off his arms. That's what he's yeah. really doing. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. And this box is so heavy, guys. Holy <laughs> cow. <laughs> Look at this. He's all what like, what oh, nobody man. knows is that's really his monthly delivery of like bullet paper, you know, from <laughs> yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. He's just got a subscription. That Way box weighs three out. pounds. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, he's just, but he's straining and he paid off the UPS like, guy to make it look heavy. He's telling you know, the UPS um, dude, like, let's move, <laughs> let's both of us like grab it, and make it look heavy. You know, you know, <laughs> that, that, that reminds me of the story about um, ah, oh, damn it, I, that's a great story, Chana. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Chana. <laughs> who's who's, who's that the was guy the lightning, man. Who's the guy on the Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. Okay, okay. so um. <laughs> He was doing a lot of work, obviously, from home, but to make it seem like he was doing a lot, he would take his cart of goods through the town and take all day to get through town so that mm. people would stop and talk to him and people would see that he's doing a lot. When in reality, he's not doing anything. So mm. I think that's uh, it's Joe just reminded me about that. Right I got gotcha, you. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. So now that we got... get all that, that toilet paper put away, man. Joe's wife's. <laughs> oh, hilarious. He's yes, still you're muted. muted. You're muted, muted, brother. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. 
All right, so so you guys saw that you guys saw that picture with all the boxes that were filling up the entire room. Yeah, that toilet paper in those boxes. All yeah, the, we saw that, all man. The, all right, so that was like sound treatment, right? The, the company it was a miscommun yeah. I guess a miscommunication or something. I thought they were gonna say like I thought they were gonna send a few, right? So while we were at CES, my wife messages me that there's like a whole box that she had to like bring in and stack up 46 pounds each box, right? You right. saw them, and uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. So basically, she put she put them away. I opened them up, and it was like enough to fill every single section of my wall and mm. ceiling. Too much, too much. And I was just like, I just messaged the guy. I said, "Hey, if I'm gonna put these up, if I'm gonna put in the effort to put these up, I'm not right. taking them down, right? right?" And they're like, "Well, those are actually a review. They're supposed to send them around." I'm like, "So okay, so I'm supposed to put these up How? and then pack them back in the box and send them to somebody else." I don't think so. I said just to have arrange to have somebody pick them up, get them out of here. <laughs> well, that that that's kind of weird, Joe, because I have them all around my room here. Excuse no, me. this is different. These are framed. They're framed. Oh wow! What is yeah, that? Is they're it, all, okay. Yeah, was they're it all metal, framed. Was it a metal frame or was it a wood frame? Wooden frame. Oh, okay. okay. So it, you know, I, I think it's a good product. It's just I, that's I a lot. That's a I lot can't put all that up and and not keep yeah. it up, right? And then take it yeah. down, yeah. Because I was, I, I was going to say, like, I'm not taking this down unless we sell the house or move or something. Because, well, those are probably easy because I could probably put the ones that you have up. I think I could probably put that up with like some tacky stuff. Now, you know, I, I, I I literally that 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 all that stuff just fell off. Like the tacky ones, ones, yeah. Especially the ones above me, they all uh -huh. they all fall off. Um, so I actually had to 3M like spray adhesive all of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this is uh this one I would have to I think I would have to put a screw in order to be legit. What do you think, Ron? You're the expert. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. So imagine I would have put in yeah. it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I don't know, sixty how, how many? Sixty, 60 holes oh. in my walls. Why? So yeah, anyway. Uh that's so that's you just sent them back? I, I'm not gonna do that. I can do That's all that. crazy. It, it make, I I did try a few, and it it makes a difference in the room. Yeah. So it just goes to show sound treatment matters. Yeah, J Joey, in your room, if you walk around and you slap your hands, do you hear like a slap echo? Do you do you hear that in your room? Some reverb. I don't know. You know what the best way to test is like if you guys could hear it, right? Yeah. I hear a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just a little I, bit. I have the worst is I have a, a mirror right behind me. Uh -oh. See, just always checking out those guys, somebody. He's flexing, man. <laughs> no, the, I'm oh. Hey, honey, have you seen this? I've, been, I've just been working out. <laughs> this uh, new mirrors video. are the worst, though, right? He's mirrors are the worst. All night. Surprise the wife. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys. All right. So uh, what did we... Oh, dude. Hey, Ron. I, I laughed when I, I saw this thing over there. I mentioned it in the other podcast. Okay. But Chana has... I have to say it here because Chana can back me up. Okay. TCL had this sound bar. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, bro. And Michael, you'd probably laugh too, because like, you know, you it's like supposed to be like at most just a sound bar and a sub, yeah. right? No rear, yeah. no, small. nothing. Sure, small, like small, like maybe 18 inches long. Okay, That's it. you wish, Chana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the uh, so, dude, tell me, not, why don't you t just say it? Because if I say it, it's gonna sound like I'm all hyped up. But tell tell me what your experience was with that little sound bar. All right, what, what, hold on a second. Bar. What company is it that makes TCL. it? TCL. TCL. They make TVs. LG. Okay. Okay. TCL. Um, the Creative Life, I think, is what it stands for. Uh, they make TVs. Actually, they had a whole bunch of stuff on display. They had cell phones, uh, brand new TCL cell phones, and they're bringing back the BlackBerry. They own BlackBerry, so there's new Blackberries, new TCL phones, and then this sound bar. It was a sound bar and a subwoofer. Okay. And they had this in this like enclosed room, not fully enclosed room, but like kind of enclosed. Okay. And they use psychoacoustics to replicate you hearing sounds from the sides behind and above. And yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Actually you, really good. Were you in the bathroom like listening to this thing? Or oh, man. Oh dude. It's it's a regular size like, was it a regular I mean, size room or no, no, it was pretty small. You know, enough for a tv and some stuff on the sides okay. um so i would imagine yeah you know in a good it's like a like a booth kind of thing yeah kind of like a booth like they you know it was, it's a big show floor so they sure. try to like enclose off a uh, space there so um i was actually pretty impressed joe was 
totally floored. He's like, what? Mm. Like, this sounds great. So it's like the like the Bose thing, like it only sounds great in their demo room. <laughs> that, hey, you know what? That's completely possible. It, is. Seriously, this was, it was a weird shape demo room. I, I yeah. got to say it was like half a room type of deal. Yeah. So it was weird. Sure. I thought it was just the tracks that they were using. So we ended up like playing the other ones, like the Leaf demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we all know what that's supposed mm -hmm. to sure. supposed to be head. It did it. Mm. It did exactly that. So it could be just the room. Right, is, but I was impressed with what I heard there. How high was the ceiling there? Did they have pretty like high. a little ceiling? Pretty really? High, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it yeah, was like you know the, the back wall where the TV was, the mm -hmm. two side walls, and then then a little bit of a rear wall, but mm -hmm. it was the real wall had a big opening for us to yeah, walk in and out sure. of, you know, like a you know, doorway or whatever. What was anyway. the price point of this thing? I don't know. I don't uh, good know. question. Good question. Uh, I don't even. But uh, I would imagine low because TCLs know for affordable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Surprising. Surprising that. And then uh, we did the. I. You know the other thing I was impressed with honestly was the, the focal. Uh, oh yeah. He was. He's looking at me. He's like, I don't want to say it. Uh, focal. I liked it. Oh. The focal. Focal. Tell me, what's what's the big deal with the folk speakers or what? What did you guys? What did you? They guys had some new. Okay. They had some new speakers. Brand new line. So Cora, sure. right? So Cora is a line that they've had for a while. Chorus is the old line. Chorus? Chorus. And then okay. this is the new line, Cora. Like, is it C-H-O-R-A, I believe? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So so that, the thing that was interesting was that, uh, well, first of all, when I think of Focal, I think expensive. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. brilliant yeah. tweeter, yeah. and sure. I think expensive, right? Um, well, a pair of these floor standing speakers, mm. I think they had three six inch drivers and a one inch um what was that material, Chana? Aluminum. Aluminum magnesium. Aluminium oh. magnesium. There you go. That's, that's well, not beryllium. Not beryllium, right? Three of these uh, uh so three six inch tweeter, uh floor standing, beautiful cabinet as you'd expect from Focal, right? And the price range on both was two 2,599 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, when I'm thinking about that, I'm like, hold up a second. Yeah. Those are less expensive than the Focal Stelia headphones that I have mm -hmm. <laughs> for a pair of those. Yeah. Wow. And uh, wow. the thing about them that's special is they had an upfiring module, right? For Atmos, for Dolby Atmos. For, and, you know, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of that stuff, but <laughs> they had like these different waveguides up there. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing something with the waveguides where like when it hit the ceiling, it really sounded like it yeah, really sounded like there. height speakers. Right. Now, I wasn't sure if it was just the Venetian, not the Venetian, sorry, um, the Mirage, the room mm. that they had had like a little what do you call it when the ceilings kind of like recessed up? Mm -hmm. So it kind of had like, like a, a little like a tray. It had like a out. tray type mm -hmm. of deal. And I was like, mm, maybe that's adding to this effect. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. But maybe. Chana. What did you think? I I have heard in um, CES and other shows like Cedia and whatever, six channel up firing at most, four channel up firing at most from the modules on the speakers. And I have to say, the um, the focals are actually this this sounded the best out of all the up firing. So what they're doing is they put these two plastic pieces in there, like a waveguide, like Joe was saying, and they are trying to align the timing of the bounce and it's a patented design. Mm -hmm. So they got the patent on it. Okay. So okay. It, it hits the low frequency and high frequency hit the same spot at the same time. Okay. I see. Right. To, to do the bounce. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they actually are onto something here because that was the most convincing. It felt like I was, uh, you know, there were high channel. It felt like there were speakers up there. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And, and they were even saying that the, what is it? That, um, the grill, the grill even mm -hmm. has some stuff that directs the sound. It's also the proper... like angled as well. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Like Was the grill... the grill? Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's a hard material. That's interesting. Okay. I could see that. Oh. And uh, Chano was digging that, the French accent a little bit. Yeah, oh, he was. He, yeah, look at this guy. He's like, oh, this guy. Dude, he just had another question. Look at his question. smile. <laughs> He's like, I got another question for you. Uh, you how just, long can we talk to me? Are you going to be at NAM next week too? Can I tell a funny story real quick before we get serious here? Yep. So, uh, so Chana and I shared a room at uh, the Strat. It's not called Stratosphere anymore. It's called the Strat. Uh, anyway, they redid it. Looks all right. And so I got in first, right? 
So I checked into the room and when he got in, I told him, hey, man, um, because, you know, I like to save money. It's kind of thing. Um, you know, Michael and I, we, you know, kind of good with our money, let's just say. So I told him, hey, bro, um, I, uh, you know, I know you asked for like the two queen size beds, but um, I got a deal. Basically, um, it's a, a single twin. I got a single twin, but we saved two bucks a night. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, are you serious, bro? He's like, I was like, okay. yeah, dude, it's two bucks, bro. Come on, dude. Right, you should be happy. That's like eight bucks total. And he's like, are you serious? I was like, nah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I love that. I love that story. Oh, man. So what do we got? What do we got? What do you guys want to talk about? What have you What have you been up to, Michael, Youth Man, Stevens, and, <laughs> and, and Ron? What have you guys been up to? More big subwoofers, man. Just playing with those things. Got the JTR, Captivator, RS2s. Um, dual 18s, 4,000 watts each. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. But it's so clean, man. Um, because it's sealed enclosures, uh, man, it, it's a different sound. It really is uh, than ported. Um, but my goodness, because there's 418s, there's just plenty of output. You know, so still trying to dial those in. I'm not the best, you know, subwoofer calibrator kind of person. And I'm trying to use REW, you know, to try to figure out best um position as well and because i've got limited space behind my um 150 inch screen that was really um, interesting what you told us earlier too about the phase yeah oh that yeah was, that was awesome weird. you should tell these guys <laughs> okay so again i'm still dialing them in but literally so on the back of the jtrs they have a uh, they call it a delay there's a delay knob and so i, I think it app acts pretty much like a phase on a lot of subwoofers and so um, I was adjusting one of the phase, literally it has 10 notches basically. So 10 settings from zero to 10. So I had both of them on zero, measured it. And zero is where you would typically, you know, you get a subwoofer, it's at zero. You're just going to, a lot of guys are just going to throw them in their, you know, their room where they think they sound, you know, where they look the best, play them, crank them up. And they're like, oh, these are great. But I want to see, okay, what else can we do to, you know, enhance the sound? And so I began to adjust the phase or the delay on one of them. And I think I got up to about, it was either five or 10. I can't remember. I think it was 10. So basically they're kind of like you're putting one sub out of phase. When I did, no lie, I gained, what did I tell you, Joe? Something ridiculous. Like It was like 30 dB 30 different. Deep. It was, I'm like, is that real? Or, you know, did my mic like really mess up? So went back, changed it back to zero same, ex I mean, like literally the graph was identical, changed one of them back to 10, graph went back up the same exact amount. So I'm like, wow. So, but my room is even as much as I, you know, people think, okay, if you've got a dedicated room and you've got it set, you got it, you know, no, my room mm -hmm. has acoustic issues just like your living room does, you know? Yeah. So we all Ooh. have challenges. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is the best way to set these up? And because, and they even have a, um, what is the other setting on there that I've been playing with too? Um, LF, I don't think it's gain. Is it like a LF boost or something like that? So, oh. so there's Mike, a couple, couple things. What's up? When you're, when you're talking about the phase, is that from one pair of, how do you want to call it? Like one cabinet to the other cabinet or Correct. just, yeah. Okay. So not, not in, in the thing. No, no, no. Itself. Yeah. So on the back of the plate amp, there's a, a delay knob. It goes from zero to 10. So in, on a lot of subwoofers, they'll have a phase adjustment like zero to 180. 180. 180. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what this is doing. That's like the same thing. Well, um, it makes sense. So completely out of phase would mean that the speakers are actually fighting each other, right? Yeah. The waves are canceling each other out perfectly right. but it yeah, but so it's it weird sounds like that's what was happening initially yeah. but it and was weird now because yeah. typically if they're on the same plane if they're on the same wall they're going to be in phase mm. so i don't know again i'm still trying to figure out like okay right yeah, no. around that so i hear you so i'll be asking jeff some questions but but they're fun man ron what's up man what's new yeah i'll show you guys let me um aside from the new cool background that you have there Just see, give yeah, me a Ron, second. Ron's getting a little DIY with this man. I like it. I know. We need, I need, Ron, you should live closer to me. I need some cool stuff. Is that showing up for you guys? 
Um, China has to bring China, it in. Yeah, yeah, he's got a. There it is. Oh, oh, are you kidding? So, so I went out and I did some outdoor measurements. That's behind my home. We have this giant field there and go. nothing around Damn, it. Damn baller! That's some there Arizona is. life right there. I know. I got, I got a big field as my backyard. Well, it's in, got. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's interesting because so that's a little JBL five thirty that I've been pretty pretty amazed with. I've been listening to the speaker nonstop since I got it in. And uh, I bought these, so I, I own these. I don't have a horse in the race here. I like I own them, so it's like I can say whatever I want about them. Mm -hmm. And I like them a lot. But what's weird about it is JBL has a sing spec negative six at 40k on the tweeter. And when I initially did my measurements in room, um, it was dropping off like a rock, like at 15. And I'm like, hmm, that's weird. What the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. So I did a gated measurement in house and it was still dropping off at 15. And I was like, forget this. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to do an ungated measurement. I'm going to speaker up as high as I can up off the ground as techno dad always recommends that you do. And um, yeah, I had that thing nine feet up in the air, as you can ah, clearly see ah. there and it's still dropping off at 15 K. So I'm kind of yeah. stumped. I don't, I don't know what to think. Did you try point. that moving mic method that I, I, told I you haven't about? yet. I haven't yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. I messaged Andrew and he's like, you're probably doing something wrong, which I probably am. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to keep working at it because now I want to mm -hmm. unravel it because the thing that we, a lot of people don't know about JBL is their, their facility is like $2 million and it's like one of the best like anechoic chambers in the world and they've got the goods. They know what the heck they're doing. So yeah. here's Ron. It's like, what, what, a, <laughs> well, I'm not going to sit here and try to pick a fight with JBL. Sure. You got a piece of gum stuck on the end of your mic, I think. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> I was just saying, that's why I was dropping off at 15K, bro. Uh, you oh, oh I, see goodness, you, I see what you mean. No, yeah, um, it's, it's really perplexing. So I don't you know. know what, if, that don't JBL it. that I tested had that crazy dip at the crossover region, remember? Yeah, yeah. And we, so. we have a pretty decent dip as well. We noted that. So I'll, I'll show that when I do the review of the 530. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to get something out real shortly for that speaker, but I love it. I mean, look, I'm not really like a big horn guy and I'm in love with this speaker. Not I don't like know how to say it. <laughs> it's just, it's great. Yeah. What did you say, John? I said, not like Mike. He's the horny yeah. guy. He's, he's the horny oh. guy. So, I got some anyways. new horns in anyway, but um, yeah. so what do you think? What do you think is causing it, Ron? So there's a couple of theories. I would say that, one theory that I'm thinking about that I've read some papers on, I'm doing a little bit of research, is with horns and whenever you have a waveguide, that can affect the frequency response on top. But where I stop myself is, but their frequency response is in an anechoic chamber with the speaker. And they're, if they're saying that it's negative 6 dB at 40K, I got a long ways to go. Like, we're not even close. We're right. It drops off like a rock at 15K. Hmm. And wow. what's even more perplexing to me is it doesn't necessarily sound that way to me. It actually sounds Normal. like there's, yeah, yeah. It sounds, it's, it's like 15 K drop off. We're talking like Harbeth territory. We're talking like, Hey, let's sip some more milk and listen to music. Like it's very warmish sounding. Mm -hmm. That's not how this speaker sounds at all. It's actually a firecracker. It's got pep. Wow. It's got, you know, I, mm. I don't know. Maybe they're kind of like adding up the response within the listening window somehow, like doing their own kind of calculation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the psychoacoustic, like how it actually sounds to a human being. Yeah. Maybe they're counting like, oh, when, when this and this happens, yeah, it might be down. But then like when you sum it up, it actually equals something else. Who knows? Yeah. And then so. to make to make the situation even more interesting is Danny actually got in a pair because somebody bought them for 300 bucks, just like I did, sent them straight to Danny to see what he can do with them. He measured them and he's showing pretty much the exact same measurement that I oh, am. Okay. All right. And on top of that, he, he can't work on the speaker because there's not enough room in there. The way that they did the uh, waveguide on the front, all the plastic, it's like glued in and he can't get to the back of the tweeter. Wow. The way that the crossover is mounted, it's just, right. there's no room in there. So he's like, I, this one is a no go. I can't do anything with this. So, huh, so if he's getting that same measurement, you know what? I'm very curious. Try that moving yeah. mic measurement. So, if for anybody who hasn't heard yet, it's a, a technique actually that was taught to me by uh, Charles Sprinkle at Cali Audio. So Cali, so he used to be the engineer at JBL. So okay. that, if that means anything, 
right? He used to be an engineer at JBL, um, super smart guy. And he they're like vouching for this new method of measuring. Well, I don't know if it's new, but it's a way where you can you actually move the mic around within the normal listening window, right? So you're yeah. not going to make the mic go way off axis because that's not yeah. realistic. But you kind of keep it within like where your head would actually be. And then um, it takes an average over a period of time. Yeah. And so kind of curious to see what that might do. Yeah, it's interesting. Do we have any questions in the in the chat? Looks like I haven't seen many mean, questions I mean, as usual. I mean, do you want to you guys want to start taking calls? I mean, we can turn All this right. up right here. We can we can either start taking. OK, OK, look at you. Here Tom's ready straight to it. He's a good host. Host with the most. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All um, right, so, Ron, someone, someone asked uh, <laughs> if you try uh, off axis, see if it climbs to be yeah. a version issue. Danny's Danny's off axis. Uh, he did both vertical and horizontal, and it it did not climb. It still dropped. So <laughs> it actually was even a more severe drop. So interesting. I'm perplexed. I'm really right. I want to learn. I want to know what I'm missing here. It's yeah. really interesting. Or they just fall off. No, well, you're saying it doesn't sound like that, though. It, it really, I mean, look, but the thing about it is with horns, yeah, there is, I mean, horns are crispy, but I don't get a sense, and maybe you guys have heard this, but with other speakers, I at times get more of a sense of the room and air than I do with some horns that I hear. So, yeah, I am getting, like, crispy cymbals and things like that, but, like, a sense of air, I don't always get that with horns. So, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you gotta just change out the cables. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's oh, hilarious. Man. Blame Vegas. Blame Vegas. Uh, Ron, your friend can build a new crossover for fix that. We already went over that. He actually can't get no. back to them. Um, manufacturer Black Magic Voodoo is what regular guy audio says. If it was if it was anybody other than JBL, I would say maybe we can have that conversation. But I just don't. I don't buy it. I wanna. I wanna figure it out. Uh, up firing at so Michael Lee, do you see that one? Up firing at most speakers sounds like you guys are not a fan. Typically, I'm not a fan because from what I've tried before, it didn't really work that well. But I'm a fan if I had those focals in here. Oh yeah, you are. The bring room. them on in here. I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I I can't use them. I can't use up firing in my room. So that's, yeah, that's I think the they're very. Is. I think they're very room dependent. Um, they're very. Even like the distance that you have them from your listening position. I mean, it's sure. all about, if you think about it, it's all about angles. Right. You've got the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that sounds fancy, but it's and what, not. How did, how did the girl like say that. If you have uh, too many obstacles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, it says she said it way better than me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like playing pool, right? So yeah, exa you, exactly. If you don't get it at the right angle, it's not going to get into the into the hole, into your ear yeah, hole properly. Exactly. You know, it'll either bounce behind. Yeah, that sounded really what? good. But, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you like that? Get you it like that into your problem? ear hole properly. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it'll either like bounce way behind you or it could bounce way in front of you. Correct. You know, so. You have no control of that. Yeah. Like, the only way yeah. you can is like, you know, nice, like e equal distance from your listening area to yep. the, the module, both yep. front and back if you're trying to do four. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it's. It's tough. It's yeah. not going to be easy. And I may have just got lucky because I, I reviewed some clip speakers, the RP8060 FAs, and just the placement that I had them, right angle, right distance, right ceiling height. It just mathematically, it must have just all worked out. Um, but put that in a bigger room, back them up further from your, you know, like if you got 14 foot like Chana has, it mm -hmm. may not work as well. Hey, uh, Michael, did yours have a, were, was it a separate, like, Mm -hmm. uh driver no, and tweeter or yeah yeah it's oh, built yeah, yeah. into the cabinet so literally on top no, of no. the cabinet the the up firing module itself was it a tweeter and a, a driver or yes. six and a half inch woofer yep and six a tweeter and a separate tweeter that was a separate like location separate separate tweeter so think about taking a small bookshelf yeah mm -hmm. laying it flat it on now. laying it flat on top of the speaker but in setting it inside the speaker and angling it kind of towards you a little bit Okay, and so, so the tweeter that's, is higher than the the woofer. I think that's what they're trying to say with these focals mm -hmm. was that it's a um, a full range, mm -hmm. meaning it's point source, right? So all of the information mids and highs are coming from the same location. Because mm -hmm. you can imagine if you have two two drivers like pointing up at the wall, mm -hmm. 
now you have some different like different angles of bounce, right? From the tweeter and the mid range, who knows if they're gonna hit your ear at the same time, right? Like That's if, what the engineers are for, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they me- they measure that stuff, you know, turn the woofer off, see how long it takes to for the tweeter to hit your ear, and then how long does it take for the the mid range? I'm just thinking that's a different, uh, another variable, right? Yeah. You're oh, absolutely. Ceiling height yeah. and all that. Absolutely. So that's just yeah. another thing to I add to think, the mix. And I always recommend if you can go with in ceiling, you know, um, if you can't go with that, go with um, like, like channels got, channel, yeah. and he's got height channels in his that works great. Um, if you don't have that, or you don't want to cut holes, or maybe you're in an apartment, you know, up firing can work. I just don't think they're. You know, don't expect magic from them. You know what I'm saying? Peaceful yep. planet. Have you have you guys heard of any new speakers coming out soon? Ron, where's our where's the Elax, bro? Where the where are those debut reference at? I've I've emailed uh, Chris a few times, and I'm like, hey, send me the IKEA speakers. Seriously, like, <laughs> get them over here. Quit messing around. Did did he respond? Wow. That guy he never responds no, to me. No, no. He does he he does like on occasion. <laughs> like if it's a good day, like. He'll respond like, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, what? No, I think he plays games. He's like, oh, this is going straight into the trash can. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, I think he has like a formula. He responds to like every fifth one, yeah. right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got a formula. That's hilarious. Um, so, new I'm excited for those now. Though. We're talking about the ELAC reference that we, Ron and I heard at uh, Rocky Mountain him. Audio Fest. I want to hear him. Yeah. I want to get my grubby hands on a pair. I, I tried to convince him to send them to me instead of Ron. Well, at Cedia, <laughs> still nothing, still nothing. Um, um, just to, um, now, Ron. I know we spoke a little bit on the phone about the L800s. I finally got a proper demo, which Joe says still mm. not a proper demo, but but a demo that I could actually remember and actually listen to. Um, Sound United, me. close your ears when I respond. Yeah, uh, it did sound like the whole entire room had headphones. I've got perfect panning that I could hear left and right. I even went back on Friday, Joe. I don't know if you know this. Okay, I went back okay. Friday um, because I wanted to hear a couple specific um, like electronic songs mm-hmm. that I know that just have like crazy panning. Yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. Um, it was great. It was very, um, very interesting to hear. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this it's different. It's, it's exactly like I never mm-hmm. heard. I used to listen to that song. It's a um, it's called Boy by um, Odessa. And I used to listen to that all the time in the car. And then I was listening to it on the Klipsch RF73s and on the, what is it, the Martin Logans. And then when I put them on the, the Focal headphones and I was just like, whoa, there's all kinds of stuff going on in here that I can't hear yeah. in my living room, which is kind of weird. I'm like, oh, that's kind of lame. But now I was able to hear all that. Yeah. So that was actually really cool. I so jo- jo- Joey, I got a question for you just to... Sure. If if our demo was a hundred percent or like an A plus, what would you say that last demo was for you? Mm. Uh, I don't know because it's a you know the demos it's a combination of a bunch of different things, right? So I'm gonna answer that question and say like I would say it was like a seventy. For okay, me. okay. You know, and that's I think that's that might be being nice because their focus this time was to show off uh, uh Dolby Atmos mixed audio. And so they mm. had this like crazy setup with a bunch of amplifiers, which of course, you know, if you only have like a few days to set this up, more room for error, right? Yeah. So could have been something there that was happening. The speakers, now you have more speakers to set up, right? They're trying to get all these speakers set up. They had four subs, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so there's just they had uh, the same two. ones. Yeah. And so even even when they did the two channel demo, turned off everything, um, it just didn't sound like the demo that we got. They didn't. Yeah. Okay, so you know they had the the seats in a line, right? Right. Yeah. Just because the main thing about those is the imaging. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ridiculous imaging. They had them kind of scattered, and imagine in a small room. Once you start getting off center, you're really getting off axis. Pretty, you know, we're pretty oh, close yeah. to the speaker, so you really start yeah. getting pretty far off axis just yeah. by being a little like. I already don't like, like it. I already don't. Like <laughs> <it>. <laughs> he wasn't even so there. I get that. That's the deal. I wish they would have just shown those off. I think people would be just amazed with what those can do. But of course they have different things, products that they have to show. So if they have to show, you know, high resolution Dolby Atmos, something, then that's what they got to do. And, yeah. And uh, uh, something that Joe and I commented on was the actual Atmos bounce. Mm. Which one was better, Joe, the Polk or the Focal? Mm, 
Focal, bro. Yeah. See, Focal. I wasn't I wasn't Focal. super impressed with the the home theater demo when I went up to um, Maryland. And I like these guys. These guys are good. These guys, but... are, these guys are nice guys. I love yeah. these guys at Sound United. So, you know, it's I I don't know. I don't know what it is, but of course, I'm not going to tell them on the spot, like at at the place. They're not going to. Yeah, I don't oh, like yeah, this. That's kind of lame. But if you ask me, I, I would just say if you heard you that demo the there. <laughs> oh, if you heard the just just put it on blast so everybody can hear. That's right. Right. I would. The reason I say that is this: if you heard it at CES and you weren't impressed, just know that it sounded better. I've heard it sound way way better, right? Yeah, I think that's okay. the point of me saying that is right. that 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 wasn't those L eight hundreds at their best. Okay, fair enough. That's fair. Hey, uh, Cotton Dude was looking at um, looking for electronic music playlist. Go ahead. I just dropped it in the chat box. Um, <gasps> it's Joey got Yamaha. Oh, yeah. uh, dude, just chill over here. AS five hundred one. What is that? Oh, look at that. I think it's a silver dude, one. I look, hope look, it's, a it's, all guns, the silver one. it's all about the guns. All about the guns. See, he's just showing off the guns. Every opportunity. Oh, Joey, you guys that are just treats. listening to the podcast, you're missing the show, man. You're missing the gun show. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I yeah. love Yamaha stuff. I really do. Yamaha. Yamaha. I just like yeah, I like how you say that. Yeah. It's I've never special. heard somebody say Yamaha. Yamaha. What did what do they say? Yamaha. Y- Yamaha? Yeah. yeah, Yamaha. Yamaha. Yeah. Yamaha. Yeah. If you go to if you go to if you do a Google search of how to pronounce <laughs> Yamaha, there is I'm not some saying out there on I'm not YouTube. Saying I'm right. Yamaha. Well, I'm yeah. saying I am. I mean yeah. <laughs> It's all good, man. It's like yams, right? I, did, like, I just never heard yams. that. Yamaha. The yams. Yamaha. So Yamaha. Yamaha. Okay. All right. So what else? Okay, we have the number. Nobody's calling in right now, which I don't mind because sometimes it gets a little crazy. But if you want to call in, you can call in. Or if you want to oh. ask questions in the chat, we'll do our best to answer them. How long is the show today? How long are we going? Uh, you know, however. <laughs> oh, however you feel. You haven't been here for like a a, a little while, so yeah, you haven't been we'll here do, for a we'll minute. Do like dude. three hours. Okay. All I'm right. Well, three hours. <laughs> Angela, do... Angela's like, what? A little bit of catching up to do. I know. I, I don't know about that. Three hours. <laughs> Chana's you... still working off a couple hours of sleep, man. He's like yeah. glazed over, dude. He's tired. And then, Chana's <laughs> like, okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Time to wrap, Time it up. wrap it up, everybody. <laughs> Glad you showed up. Um, has Sound United brought a, out a cheap pre pro receiver wow. without amps? A cheap? Well, see, I mean, that's pro receiver like out. Okay, I mean, Stanny, it's really. Oh, it, it, oh if they were to fix it. Sorry. Oh, we got a call? Yeah. Hold that answer, okay? All right. Because this is time sensitive a little bit. Can pull it up. You're <clears throat> on the air. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey what's, what's going on? up? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. First of all, I just want to say thanks a lot for. T- I like to say thank you to Techno Dad and Youth Man. You guys rock thanks, when man. it comes to uh, demonstration on on home theaters uh, equipment sure. and whatnot. They're all right. They're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, Ron's hey, not feeling hey, the love here. Yeah. Well, check this out. Quick question for you guys. Okay. Uh, at most speakers, I understand that in ceilings is the way to go. Mm-hmm. But what about bookshelf speakers no, mounted? No, no, no. That'll on the here. ceiling, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. Is it because of the no, the, the, no, no, no. I, no, I said, or I said those will work. Yeah. Those will work. So, okay. um, I think for that, I, I, I would say don't mount them on the ceiling, though. I would say mount them up high on the wall and and kind of angle. angle them down, like the side okay. wall or okay. back wall, depending on like what you have there. I think the biggest thing right. you're going to run into is just kind of safely mounting those. Um, yes. I used to have some that would angle down, but I think they only angle down with like 10%, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. um, now SVS does make one that's a ceiling mount. Like, I think you've got that in, in your voice of God speaker, right? Chana that mounts. Actually, I, don't, I, I, I'm just, I'm not even using their quote unquote ceiling mount. It's just okay. a regular keyhole okay. mount. Okay. And the bracket they get. Mm-hmm. You're sketchy. Dude. <laughs> but it would, I cannot believe you. But it wouldn't be a like bad that. idea. It wouldn't be a bad idea to mount the, uh, the those CVS mounts on the ceiling, so I can get that uh, that that real good uh, listening position. For yeah, I mean, um, it, 
it all depends whatever bookshelf speaker you go with and whatever mount you go with make sure that that mount is a securely into your ceiling yeah sure preferably into a stud but you know uh, kind of hard um sometimes and then of course you know make sure it's angled it the right way and it just won't fall down that's, yeah that's, <laughs> that's 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 the biggest that's, thing about that's, it yeah, that's, that's, yeah don't worry about it i won't see you guys if i have a speaker dropping on my head <laughs> yeah, there, yeah there's, lo- there's no liability in this show i promise you that. <laughs> i gotcha so it does so as long as i got a good pair of, of yeah. speakers uh bookshelf speakers that securely you know fastens to the ceiling it doesn't matter what type of uh uh you know they have to have that special woofer yeah. or whatnot for that no. Version yeah. and stuff like that. No, no there's not good. like a special Atmos speaker. Yeah, I mean, um, the like, like I know Klipsch and Dolby Atmos have like a little thing to make those, um, those the ones up-firing. with the firing. Yep, they actually different. play. Yeah, they play with the frequencies to make the bounce happen correctly. So you won't even see a frequency gotcha. response on those speakers online, which is really right. weird. When I yeah, got they them, won't post them. Mm-hmm. They won't post them because it's some like what it's what crazy. was it. The um manufacturer voodoo or something that <laughs> the comment earlier. It's yeah. exactly what that is. Yeah. Um, but you're better off with a bookshelf speaker or anything that has maybe an angled front baffle, uh, like the SVS Prime Elevation. That's what I use. <laughs> um, and then I have a set, uh, I have them crossed over at a hundred. And normally the regular uh Dolby Atmos bouncy speakers, they say to set your AVR uh, at 120 or 150, depending on that. I guess whatever <laughs> sounds good. All right. Well, awesome guys. Thanks a lot. You know, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. keep up the uh, the good uh, work on on your on your shows to all four of you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, thanks Thank for calling you. in. Right. Have a good one. Bye. So so as long as long as he doesn't get uh the monolith that you that you got in the two fifteens, <laughs> exactly. right? No, he just he needs can... to make sure he doesn't mount them with a dang drywall anchor like I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. But they did last for twelve years, so that's saying something. <laughs> who knows? I had a, I had a yeah. fifty pound. I my my logic there was okay. It's I don't want to mount it in the stud because then it doesn't put it in the position I need it in. Um, and when I did, I just figured okay, I'll just mount it with a drywall anchor that's like twice the regular, you know, twice the rating of the actual weight of the speaker. And it it worked fine for twelve years, and then it just fell one day. Fortunately, I had another speaker box underneath it and it caught it because that would have been that would have been a, a not so pleasant day. I wouldn't have been as as cheerful, I'm sure. I think we answered that one. Uh, the question that's on the screen, what is your honest opinion of yeah. the Focal Cora A26D at most yeah, speakers you guys listen to? We, we were impressed. I mean, we have I have a video up on my channel of our actual demo and you can see our initial reaction. And um, yeah, I, I have nothing but good things to say about it. Yeah, um, especially that price yeah. point. I was actually pretty, pretty impressed too. Im- impressive price point for Focal for, for the for the for that brand. For, yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind if they were a thousand bucks less. I don't know if they could do it, but yeah. they look awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, you can't complain. They, they look awesome. A new sound awesome. recycled carbon fiber for the material for the actual cones. That was pretty cool too. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. here's a question. Do you see that question about um, the tube connectors? That Danny used on the 600M. So I was actually curious about that too, Ron. So I know that that's a, you know, we get into a territory where like people get real like weird about audio stuff, right? Yeah, sure. Just because like you, you don't expect something to work, like cables or like a hot, you know, you anytime you start talking about that, it's always an issue, right? And I think that's the point of us doing these is because we we do have different perspectives, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's cool. Like, yeah. I think that's what we, I, I never want to stray away from like tough questions. Like, bring it on. Like, ask us the tough questions and watch how we handle it. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, no, what's it, up, what is it? What's up with those? What are they? I have no idea what they are. So, yeah. What do the, they do? Yeah. They're, they're low mass, high contact area connectors for speakers. Okay. So, instead of you know like five-way binding posts you would replace them with these tube connectors which were designed by danny okay um and you hear engineers talk about um this actually pretty often so this isn't we're not entering snake oil territory when we Mm -hmm. say what you do want is low mass and high contact areas meaning that you want as much contact on whatever it is that you're making the connection to and you want the least amount of mass um as possible and that's what the tube connectors are 
I think the reason maybe why this person is bringing it up and correct me if I'm wrong is I did some sound clips um, and it was requested that I do sound clips uh, comparison of the tube connectors and not the tube connectors. And I did so set up the Earthworks microphones and to my surprise, uh, I was shocked to be frank with you guys that I heard a difference and they're out there. Anybody can listen to the sound clips, put on a pair of headphones. You can't, you're never going to hear a difference on like a laptop or on a phone. <laughs> um, but as I mentioned in, in the video that I did, there is for me a clarity difference. So try it. I mean, that's, that's all I can say is just listen for yourself. See, for me, I, I would it, like, if it was a connection thing like that, like, I guess my initial reaction would be skeptical, right? Sure. My yeah. Initial reaction would be like, if if I'm using some decent binding posts, I, sh you know, maybe it makes some kind of measurable dif difference, but I could, it, I would find it hard to believe I could hear a difference. Yeah. Right. That's my initial <clears throat> stance on it, having yeah. not heard them at all. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, and Danny. So yeah, in, in all of Danny's upgrades, and this is this has been brought up a lot, is in all of Danny's upgrades, he offers with and without the tube connectors. It's not like when you do an upgrade package through Danny that you have to get the tube connectors. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. You know, if you want to do tube connectors, great. If you don't, great. Um, I'm just reporting what I heard. And there were many others that listened to the YouTube clip. And keep in mind, when I listened to it, I recorded it on a Zoom F F8N. So that's 24192. It's high resolution. I listened with, you know, decent gear. I heard the difference, and then when I uploaded it to YouTube, I still heard the difference. Hmm. And then to my surprise, there were people that were commenting going, clearly I can tell a difference. Like, it's pretty clear. So I it's think out there. It, it's just scary. Like, if that's true, then it's like, what the heck? Why? What, what's going on here? Like, I don't want it. I, I don't want this to be true. I, sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Because that means everything that I've heard doesn't have those connectors, right? So yeah. And this is up everything. And I don't think that it's I don't think that it's like a secret sauce that he's discovered. I think that any connector that is going to be low mass, high contact area might be better, could be better than cheap binding posts that are typically high mass steel stamped with gold plate. You know, it's like that's not that's not what we're talking about here. And maybe that's all there is to it. All right. Well, it's so, interesting, right? This, this is it the, is. This is how it you is. do it, guys. <laughs> you don't go in somebody's comments like trashing people you just ah, ask yeah. and you talk and you have fun with it right yeah. yeah so if that is the case then cool if it's not then whatever it doesn't matter yeah yeah it's all having fun yeah. here yeah i think um, you know uh, to to go to your point um ron that you were saying you know you know we all or whoever maybe joe was we all have different perspectives now when you said that like fifteen thousand, it just rolls off like I know mastering engineers that roll off the music at 17k so yeah i don't know sure. i don't know if that has anything to do with it like do they really need to be up at twenty thousand? yeah sure you well and, the, and that's the thing is like i i've talked about this to death with andrew like the adantes definitely go up to 40k there's no or 30 or 40k wow and he's like even though you can't hear it i'm i'm paraphrasing this is not a direct quote but even though you can't hear it there is a sensory there are things that are happening that right you can't hear it but if it was gone like like if we we're just cut it off you'd be like something's changed and i don't know right. what it is right and so um i noticed that with dsd like if you get older dsd files like from stuff that was recorded on two inch tape it there there is a difference i can't yeah. hear it i i can feel it like the michael jackson sensory uh, yeah th yeah michael jackson thriller i have it on 512 dsd or whatever and listening to the mp3 and then that and then the cd and then that like there's something else going on that yeah. I have no idea. And even even some of my music students are like, I played it for him and he's like, oh wow. That's a yeah. That sounds hmm. great. He he was like, that that sounds way better. So it's one of those things. I wonder if it's more about the capability of a tweeter that can actually go up that high, right? So instead yeah. of saying, like, I'm gonna actually like go ahead and cut it off, maybe you might not be able to hear that as much as let's say if you were to compare a tweeter that couldn't go up to 40k. Versus a tweeter that can, right? So, like, imagine a singer who can, like, hit super high notes, right? Yeah. If you're singing some lower notes, you can do it at ease, with ease. Like Ron. Like, like Ron, Ron yeah. like Chana, right? Yeah. You right. can sing those high notes at with ease. And so maybe that's what you kind of hear as far as, like, a speaker that can go to 40K. It can do 20K <laughs> or whatever, as high as you can hear. Super easy. Yeah. It doesn't struggle to, to hit those notes, right? Versus one that can sure. barely, barely get, can hit 17. 
you know, when it's at 17, it might sound different than that other tweeter. Yeah, could be. What else we got here? Um, Burn Burn Mueller was saying that he was surprised there wasn't that many 4K projectors at CES. I hope Chana saw some JBL projectors and that, you know, JBL. saw a little something. JBL projectors. A JBL, JVC. JVC. I'm like, you look at what Ron yeah, got like, me on the JBL okay. tip. JBL. JVC. <laughs> New to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Mike, we saw the uh, the JVC, the the what, $18,000 one, the 8K E shift one. Nice. Ooh. Gorgeous. And then they had the new $3,600, more, way more affordable. Yeah. Um, I think it's a laser DLP mm-hmm. projector. Now he said it it they can call it 4K UHD because each pixel is represented, but right. it's still doing the pixel, yeah, the shift pixel shifting thing. or yeah. E shift or I think yeah. they, they do E shift technology on theirs. Tell me the colors didn't like oh when yeah, they, like, they switched it over China. Oh yeah, we were like, the, the, the colors like, the cheap oh. one. I was like, oh uh, really? Yeah. You would not notice, you wouldn't notice if they hadn't started with a super expensive one, but like right. the colors were all like super vibrant. And then they switched the other one. Oh. And then he was yeah. saying like, even uh, a lot of it has to do with their, what is it? The, not the DLNA. DLP? DIL and some sort of processing that they have mm-hmm. in the, I think the projector that you're going to get the NX five or something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. All of those have that. And that's okay. the one thing that sets JVC apart for colors right. and black levels. Is is what that the like their pa- they're kind of like proprietary stuff probably that, that i don't know it, it would make sense because yeah. nobody else is using it i've never seen that that phrase or that abbreviation let me let me try to look for it while you guys epson talk. epson we saw epson at pepcom super cool oh yeah they have a new like little projector little baby projector you can mm-hmm. put on a ceiling or something yeah, <laughs> like, i wasn't uh, too interested in that i want i like their the stuff that michael has which one do you, you like have that? again I have the Epson 5040. So it's 5040. a little bit older. We, we couldn't probably... figure out which one it was. Was it the 5060, the 5050, the 40? I said 5040. Yeah. So like, I, have a, it... I have a 5040. 50, and then 40. they have a new, like, 50, I think it's 50, it's either 5050, 50, 5060. Yeah, see, I, I don't, why did they make it so close? Like, the name. I wonder if Ron would like a projector. I, I used wonder... to have one a long time ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about these, this new stuff is different, though. I would I was, it. I was in the pro- projectors back in the day, and it's like, it's different now, right? Like these are starting to get to the level, like, oh, this kind of looks like a TV when you get into a dark room, you know. So I would rock, I would rock a projector, yeah, for sure. I just thought that with a trans uh, acoustically transparent screen, yeah, maybe there might be something in there for you with your current oh, yeah. setup and something like that. Heck yeah, oh, I would do that. I gotta say, Ron, um, Chana and I saw the NAD T. Ooh. Seven, yeah, seven, them. eight, and the what's the other one that they M33. had there? That was even more. Chana was telling me about that. Not, yeah, ooh, ooh, nice. ooh. he's gonna. You're gonna love that one. Ron, Ron, Ron is right going. There. Why are you grinning so big, Ron? M10 yeah. on steroids. Yeah, it's funny because Peter it looks sweet. Peter sent me an email like right before I heard it from Chana, and yeah. he's like, dude, you're gonna love this thing. And I was like, I already do. <laughs> he's like, well, yeah. send me one. That's all so you gotta do. What, what's up with that new one? I, I mean, we should be telling you, but. What's up with that uh that one that they showed that was just a two channel setup? What it looks to me like what they've done is they've taken the concept of the M10, which is killer, and uh, that review of mine will be out like in I don't know four to forty eight weeks. But um, it looks what they did is they took the brains of it and they stuffed it in like a bona fide audiophile chassis where they are pushing it to its limits. So there's more power, there's more flexibility, there's more headroom. It's basically like a beefed up be majorly beefed up version of the m10 mm-hmm. i think they said they just want to send uh send one to me in china is that cool well what's up with you guys like <laughs> <laughs> busting, busting we're, just, we're just messing around That's how we do it i actually want their avr they have a nine channel avr that they're can releasing you zoom in on ron though can you zoom in on ron while we tell them that they're going to send those <laughs> up for us I, I, if i do that i think I, i'll take i'd have to take upper left no 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 uh oh there we oh, go, Michael. Right. What happened? I'll do my Joey impression when you zoom in. Okay, on let's see. Let's see. <laughs> oh, hey guys! Uh, welcome to the Daily Hi Fi Show. Hey, those, they look pretty good. Oh my god! Good, dude. I've, I've been lifting twins here lately. So. That's right, dude. That's right. He's, He's been uh, rocking. You know what yeah. it is? The reason I'm sitting like this is because this mic. I need to get a new stand because if I pull this out right. where I should, where I'm over here, right, it's gonna right. fall over. 
Are you saying it's too heavy for you those guns to hold up? Yes, it's too. This <laughs> might whole <laughs> podcast. You want me to just hold? I would up expect up? more from you. Guys. <laughs> oh man, but oh, so T seven. Oh, dude, I want that. That seven 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 eight. It's the newer one. Uh, so Dirac. It, what was it? Twelve cha- Twelve channels and like eight. I'm oh, sorry, nine, nine, nine. Nine channels. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you said it was two grand or something ridiculous. Three. Or like three grand. Three. Okay. Yeah. What's Front up? Uh, that's, that's a little better. Williston Audio Labs. Big D Wiz. Yeah, it was, I didn't um, get. I didn't catch too much coverage of the car, um, like the car audio stuff over there at CES, but there was um, a lot. There was a lot. It was popping off in that one. It looked like old school CES in that room. You know what I mean? A bunch of cars. It was kind of kind of cool. Um, I think I think one one of the coolest things of the show was that new NAD nine channel AVR. I think they are on the on the road there. They got something uh, on the on the right path to getting something affordable. You know, Dirac Live three thousand yeah. dollars nine oh, yeah. channels of power and i i have a and they even rated it at 80 watts per channel nine channels driven conservative uh, yeah full, full right. bandwidth exactly full bandwidth yeah yeah at most dtsx front touch screen just like the m10 yeah that it, looks, like, it looks so nice cool. it looks so futuristic and cool pretty sweet they're, man. they're on to something man they're on a roll i love was it there a i love it there? was there a, like a dial or was I, it yeah i think there is um i can look up chris's video because he I think there's two knobs, one on the left and one on the right. No, no, they, she did input. Hey, Ron, does yours have a knob on there? It's all touchscreen in the front. All touchscreen. You walk up, you that. touch it, and I you just go. Like, there's no knob. I think it's like that, Chana. It yeah. just looks so cool. Dude, I, want I love it. I love it. I love. I think that's going to be a hot, hot, hot item. If there's nothing wrong with it, if it's just as they say it is, nothing special. They'll right? kill it. Yeah, they'll kill it's, it. It's going to be awesome. That's yeah. great. Let's see. Let me get some more info here. And hey, thank you, Tana. We just got five bucks, guys. Woo. Hey, Tana Solid. What's up, man? How are you doing? Thank you so much for the super chat. Ladies That's awesome. They are welcome. Welcome. So, thank you. Thank you. I wanted to post my comments in response. Which one would I click reply? What is that? Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Somebody's getting. I, I think oh, Michael's doing tech, 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 uh, tech. Uh, tech support oh, over there tech support with wifey maybe oh, okay <laughs> i heard like a smooth voice <laughs> uh yes the focal okay so i'll have to pay attention to that that receiver that sounds pretty killer i mean 3k that, it, that's chana you would know bro that seems very affordable for like the stuff out there that's like the right price for what you're getting yeah yeah and i i think what it is mainly for me is the the dirac like what what's yeah. got Dirac that's coming in at 3k because i know the audio control audio control has new avrs that i saw at cedia and they're coming in way above 3k yeah um, okay they do offer all four though they offer atmos dtsx imax enhanced and oro 3d on the on the audio controls but we're getting up into the four thousand dollar range and and above so that's kind of tough so i have a i have a comment here uh for for ron so you're a two channel guy right yeah mm-hmm. you're already like you're using a class d amp right now in the m10 yeah. right yeah correct so yeah. we got that now we're if we're talking about uh nad still using a class d i think well i don't know is the t778 class d i don't even know about that it might not be I don't know. Um, but you you're using room correction, right? So you're doing yeah. all these things. You're you're moving moving along, right? Yeah. New, new um, digital day, yeah, right, yeah. New digital day. <laughs> yeah. Um so would you be completely against you know, adding a center channel and some rear nice rear speakers that would match your current setup because you can always turn those off, right? You don't they don't have to be on because Anyway, I, I'm just thinking, just thinking it might be a well, let me put it to you this way. When I heard those JBLs and I knew that the cell was still going on, I was like, I get another pair of those and I get the center channel. I already got like subs up the wazoo. I'm like there. And I I was really tempted to do it. So it's on my mind. I'm like, that would be a lot of fun to explore that for sure. You can always go two channel. You know, when I listen to music, I, yeah. I hit that one button 
and I'm just listening to the two speakers with no room correction, nothing. I yeah, bet. yeah, correct. it'd be stereo. a lot of fun. Yeah, Wh which one do you hit? Stereo, direct, stereo, direct. I use pure bypass. direct. Pure direct. That's what it's called. Yeah, pure direct. Pure mode. Direct. So that's yeah. like a no processing, everything shut off that needs to be shut off. Is that what that means? Correct. That's exactly right. Cool. Cool. I have yep, to step yep. away. Okay. What else we got? Oh. So I, I've got about 15 more minutes, and I've got to do bedtime with Georgia. So that gives us yeah. an idea here. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that gives, that's a good time. I think that's yeah, a good time. We're good. I just want to, you know, I, I always want to just get together, give people an update, answer so, whatever questions we can answer. Can I can I ask you guys something? Nope. Um, hopefully I don't get into the weeds here, but uh -huh. um, it seems to me if we're talking about the high end, you know, which I I feel like I have my finger on the pulse of that. It seems to me that the way that CES has been talked about over the last couple of years is there's like tumbleweeds, you know, and like don't even bother. Who cares? It's just a waste of time. Is that what you guys witnessed or experienced while you were there? Was there much high end or was it more high end? Say? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's that shot that Joe has in his video, like the always just empty yeah can you do the thin little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my I... goodness where are we going with this that's what it sounded like no. you know what i mean it was pretty well let's just it say quiet in comparison quiet. to where we had just come from from that main hall <clears throat> where it's just chaos and then we go into the venetian and it's just like yeah. hey what's it's up dad hey. okay hey. Hi. But, how are you doing i yeah, mean maybe cd has just shifted kind of their focus you know? okay because to I me, when is. I think of CD, I think of tech, like all things tech. You're talking and about CES. CES. C I'm sorry, CES. So that's like all things tech. I mean, we're talking cell phones. I mean, I'm watching um, guys go into kind of like a smart um, kitchen, you know. And so there's like a just a wide gamut of stuff there. So I don't, I think some of the smaller shows that are more focused on like hi-fi gear, is probably where a lot of these guys are just focusing their attention. Yeah, eighty thousand dollar cables, all that stuff. Yeah, I think uh, I think some who is that? A regular guy audio is onto something. He says, "I believe Hi-Fi is underexposed." I think part of it is that not enough marketing. They're not pushing all the stuff that they can do. It's not exciting, and so CES is about technological advancement, right? Yeah, and yeah, so innovation. I have a hard time. Don't change much. Yeah, yeah, I have a hard time seeing something that I would say like, Oh, that's technological advancement. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And so yeah, we have advancement in, <clears throat> you know, let's say Polk audio, like that's an advancement in the way that they're doing the SDA, uh, you know, the L 800. That's advancement, but would a normal person care about that? No. Right. Okay. Um, Got it. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of weird. Like what's advancing right now. Uh, no, active noise canceling headphones are hot right now. Um, sound bars are still hot, I guess, you know, wireless, like multi-room audio is still a thing. And like, these are the, these are the things that most people are looking at, uh, you know, uh, Google assistant or, you know, Alexa in built right, speakers. Right. These are the advancements that people are excited about because it makes it easier, right? Yeah. It's a convenience and thing. It's totally about convenience yeah. and accessibility mm -hmm. and, and ease of use. Right. So I think if you can combine those things, here's what I think the audio industry industry needs to do. They need to embrace all of those things. Don't forget, stop ignoring that yeah. those things, right? They have to embrace that. But <clears> at <throat> the same time, they have to push the sound quality aspect of it. Like, right. you know what? For not that much more, you can have a system that sounds way better right. than whatever that single Bluetooth or wireless speaker is. You know, let's just say, for example, Apple HomePod is... I think they started off at like 350. Now they're like 200, mm. right? So for a pair, yeah. that's 400. Can you yeah. get something better for 400 a pair? I think so. I think you can, right? But they're advancing. So those uh, Apple HomePod speakers, Ron, I don't know if you know, but they have a bunch of microphones in there and they adjust to where you place them in the room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am more so of that. Place yep. it by a wall or a corner, you know, that it knows to not push a bunch of sound through that side like those are cool things right but then you look apple has the money to spend on that google amazon these For guys sure. have a bunch of money to to market these things um so i think that's that's part of the issue is uh we need to start embracing more of that stuff 
but also pushing hey you know what two speakers look cool get some nice looking speakers sure oh my god my, my daughter's singing all crazy right now. <laughs> she sounds beautiful bro that's like me at ces yes yeah. it was so what do you guys think what, what do you think audio the audio industry needs to do from your perspective you get you get you know we hear from the customers you know we hear from a different perspective so what do you guys think they need to do in order to advance and so you know move forward and grow the industry forget forget surviving growing yeah. it i think it part of it they're fighting culture you know the culture itself a lot of people aren't interested in like think about your friends you know that are just that you grew up with or people that are still involved in your life, at least to some extent, the vast majority of my friends don't have nice setups. You know, they have a TV or, you know, I mean, they're, they're excited that they've got a 75 inch TV or an 85 right. inch TV. They're not excited about putting 220 pound subwoofers in their living room, you know, so or what do they get? Doing a they get a big TV so that, like that. That's it. What's that? What do they get if the, let's say they get a seventy-five inch TV? What do they usually get with it? Do they use the speakers on that TV? No. Yeah. No. Seriously. <laughs> I'm I'm dead serious, man. That hurts my feelings. I, trust me, it it make it bleeds my heart, Joe. <laughs> so uh, you can't convince those people, like, hey, come on, man. Yeah. Are you I mean, they they love hearing a nice setup, but they don't want to invest the money in it. A lot of people don't. Right. Right. You know. And sure. I, sure. Uh, Phil from. Uh, from Sound United said people I actually haven't heard a proper mm -hmm. setup. Yeah. Right. A lot of people growing up have not heard it. Sure. Um, you know, when my teenager wants to listen to something, he goes to his phone, looks up the YouTube mm -hmm. video, hits play, puts the phone yeah. back in his pocket, and he's just using the speakerphone. Yeah. That's, that's that's it. That's it. So like what that. is the barrier then? You gotta raise them up price? and start them young. You think it's the price? Do you think what do you think it is that's holding people back from getting a decent setup not even crazy just yeah. a decent setup yeah. i think what you were saying joe is the um the amplifier or receiver that that piece right there is what confuses people mm -hmm. like they just lose their shit they're like oh well, all these speakers look cool they sound great oh well you need to get this receiver oh. I, and, they're, and then they're just <laughs> gone they're like out they're out you know i think they're that's why the nad i think they might be onto something because it looks like something you're familiar with now right yeah, it's right. like very with technical. A bunch of buttons. Yeah. It's the touch screen, yeah. right? It looks like oh, that kind of looks like a tablet or something like that. I, I can yeah. work with that. Yeah, yeah. And another thing they're doing good is they're doing that HDMI arc in those things, so people can oh, yeah. plug in your TV, TV to control it. Yeah, you True. still haven't done that, have you, Ron? What's that? The arc thing? Yeah. No, no, I they ain't had the to do that. You, you said that with disgust. <laughs> you need an no. HDMI cable. Oh, dude, I yeah. bet it's going to be like an audio quest or something. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, Man. yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> I, you got to get the crazy ones. Have them I, sent so, you. I, I think, Joe, you're right on that. I think, you know, products like that, touch screen, nice big display. App driven. Yeah. App driven. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's those, those are big things for people yeah. nowadays. And be able right. to talk to it. You know what I mean? If you could just tell it, this is what I want. Switch to this. Right? Sure. Yeah. Make it easy. You know? Yeah. Could be and make it of... so you could nerd out on it too if you want to. Um, yeah, I mean, we could just be like, Hey, uh Alexa, put on Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Apple Prime Video. Yeah. Oh. I wonder yeah. if that's gonna get some people in the right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody's just going off. <laughs> damn you china what are you doing over there yeah um, i think that's the i think that's the key really is a receiver that's not scary an avr whatever it may be that's not intimidating that looks familiar looks like new tech looks cool in your living room i think the speakers are not a problem i think mm. everybody thinks that the speakers like are the those. problem people like those i think speakers look cool i think people like the way they look you know i asked my wife and she says what is it what what don't you like 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 a home theater set the speakers or the or the receiver she said the receiver yeah because it takes up space and it does just yeah. it just sits there oh she wants the silver one already see oh see see you're, you're gonna love that yamaha i guarantee it i guarantee it Ooh. i'm excited so this is a two channel Ooh. setup though so yeah i'm a ding dong be a little bit different yamaha. i'm gonna go back to ron status
<laughs> Millennials hey, can't afford rent, much less speakers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta well, let's get, not get into out. that. But I mean, like. Hey, Ron, I know you have to run uh, for anybody who doesn't know. Make sure to check out Ron's channel at YouTube.com forward slash new record day. He does more of the high end stuff, you know, so kind of the opposite of what I do. And uh, yeah, it's interesting, interesting stuff. He does Tech Tuesdays. What else, Ron? What else you got going on on your channel? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of back in full swing at this point. So I do uh, Tuesday Tech Talks, and that's actually evolved recently. I did a video that mentioned about the next chapter. I've had a, it's been a grand vision this entire time to let's not make this exclusive to just Danny. Let's open the door to other manufacturers. And um, I'm happy to report that that's now in the works. So I have some other, yeah, other manufacturers that want to jump in there and, and offer up some great videos so that that will be coming soon. And, um, and then frequency Fridays. And so that's back, that's back in full swing. So expect, um, this Friday I'll be doing a frequency Friday. I'm going to either do one of two videos. I don't know which one yet. It's either going to be talking about a bunch of speakers that I did some sound clips for and just my first impressions about those speakers. Or, um, it's been a long time coming, but I got my grubby hands on shit audio gear, which is really cool for me because it's, it's really affordable and I got to say, it sounds really, really good. So I might do some first impressions. So look out for that video as cool. early as that's Friday. Pop them out, Ron. Pop them out. I want to see you move that camera, bro. Yeah. You got I, I mean, camera, so I want to see you move that. Thing. I want to see some cool shots. Yeah. The yeah. Slider yeah. action, some yeah. gimbal stuff, you know, <laughs> just for me. I don't, care. I don't care if it's going to get a lot of views just for me. No, so, man, definitely. You guys, I just dropped in the uh, chat box here um, Ron's video, uh, 10 Mistakes. Um, that was a fun one. That was awesome. Fun one. It's a great video. You guys yep. should definitely check it out if you have not already. Uh, so the link is there down in the chat box there. Go show him yeah. some love. Yeah. All right, All right Ron. Well, I Thank know you, you got to take off, bro. Later, Thank you. brother. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Take care. Later. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that video that he did. Oh my! How many is that thing at right now? Said like yeah. seventy thousand. Seventy thousand. Yeah. Oh, that no, thing. That's that, well, man. That was a good yeah. video. So what else? Um, we're about uh an hour and sixteen, hour 16. into this. Um, you want to throw up the number again? Maybe take one more call, then we can we can do our thing. Yeah, let's yeah let's do that. So call in oh. with the question if you guys have a question. I know we're trying to get through the chat here and answer questions as much as possible. Do people even spend time in their living rooms? I do. I spend a lot of time in my living room editing. I don't spend a lot of time in there. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> I'm literally either over here at the, at the desk editing a video or in the theater room shooting a video or building building a website. So yeah, I don't spend James. much time in the living room. James says, hey, Joe. We don't, have a, so we don't have a TV there either. All right. How's the Sonos 5.1 soundbar? You know what? I was uh, I tested the Sonos Beam, and so far, as of as of right now, that's the best sounding soundbar that I've heard that you can you can get. Maybe that TCL when it comes in. Got a call here. All right. Hello. Who Hello. Got? You're on the air. State your name and why you're calling, and uh, whatever else other information you want to give us. Oh, hi, Joe. This is Regular Guy Audio. Oh, oh what's what up, man? man? Not a lot, man. I just I'm watching you guys with the delay, so I'm gonna mute the the stream. <clears throat> I just wanted to know what you guys thought about encouraging future generations to join the hi-fi hobby. Yeah, absolutely. W what well, do you, what is the question uh, specifically? Like how to get the young the, well, the kids uh, in, right? Are you saying should well, we I'm, or how do we? Do you think it's beneficial to the hobby as a whole? Absolutely. I, I spend a lot of my time, my time trying to educate and sending people to channels like yours because I've, I've been enjoying audio for the better part of 30 years. Sure. And I've noticed in my later years with the prodigious amount of information available that the knowledge and the drive to see it is falling off. I, right. I tell people about my stereo and they look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. Until they hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once they hear it they're like oh okay i get it i think that's yeah. what it is once they hear it they get it you know if i said like if i told a younger dude like hey you know what you can actually have this system i think everybody would want that right it's different like uh, headphones are a big deal right now right right mm -hmm. but come on yeah, no, I, I, love, 
headphones as well. Are you telling me that you don't feel a difference when you play speakers nice and loud, playing some great music, and then you're sharing the experience with somebody else? Is that not a different experience than some great headphones, right? Oh, it's, it's totally different because you can you can still talk and you're not as isolated, and you're sitting in a room with someone else who's also enjoying it, and, and you just have that connection, which I, I've always liked. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a little party at your house, right? Do do people not party anymore? Is that what it is? I don't know. What's up with these young oh, no, with these young whippersnappers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Like, do they not party? I mean, the, the, sharing the experience well, and dancing, and getting up, and and you know, moving and letting the music move you, I think is yeah. a big big deal, right? Well, um, oh, I think so too. Like when I go over to my friends and we light up his pokes on his vintage stuff, and we sit around. You know, all us old buddies and play video games and whatnot mm -hmm. on the system. It's a it's a real enjoyable experience, and it's also right. very yeah. beneficial to get just socially. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it makes me smile just imagining you guys going over there playing games. Great system. I can imagine it makes you just enjoy the whole whole experience the whole, more. It yeah. changes yeah. the dynamic. Absolutely. I've been recently. I, I'm not a gamer by any means, but playing Call of Duty: The Modern Warfare. Holy cow! It's like the most intense thing. I had a guy over and he's like ducking in the seat going, you know, <laughs> what's I mean, going on from over here? It's crazy yeah, it's because you know super, where the guys super are. Super immersive. It really puts you in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I guess to answer your question specifically, I think the key for the younger generation is let them know that it's not expensive. I think the main thing yeah. when you're young, I don't know about anybody else, but most young people, Unless you grew up in a rich family or something yeah. like that, you can't afford any of this stuff, right? Like you start looking and, you know, we're like, hey, $3,000 for, uh, uh, you know, this NAD is pretty affordable. Like a young guy would look at that like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. What do you mean that's affordable to who? And Not only, to me. Only 80 watts for I tell them I put together my whole vintage system with all the ridiculousness it is for less than $1,000 on the whole. I mean, I had to reform a few pairs of speakers, but not a lot of people realize that refunds are simple and doable and in most cases you can get the kits for 25 or 30 bucks yeah so, so that's one way to go and save a buck that, yeah. that's one way right i think i think really the key would be uh just affordable so like those mica rb42s that mm -hmm. you know yeah. we always talk about they're small so you can fit them somewhere you can get a small class d amp you know i recently reviewed an smsl class d amp and i think that combo yeah, I saw that. that combo right there would Put a smile about. on a young yeah. dude's face. Yeah. yeah. And what I did with my my kids, they all had used equipment. You know? So my son, ever since he was probably 12 years old, has had some massive speakers in his bedroom. He's had four 10-inch drivers in his towers. <laughs> Joe's like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. And, and my daughter, she has some smaller bookshelf speakers. My other daughter has some older Infinity speakers that somebody gave me. They're the little towers. I think they were the what, RS RS ones or something like that. So, but you don't have to spend a ton of the benefit of being youth man's kid. <laughs> Everybody's hooked up except my wife. But I'm not trying... like me when I when I was a kid. My yeah. dad got me into it with a JVC RS33 yeah. receiver and a pair of ADS. Yes. I mean, and then from there, it's been 30 years, and I got yeah. eight feet of speaker in front of me all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it either has to come from, say, a parent, you know, to the child, or maybe from a friend to a friend. You know, there's a lot of guys that that are friends of mine that weren't into home audio, and then they would come over and they would just spend time. And they're like, "Man, I really like the way this sounds. Can you help?" me build something in my home but of course you know i don't want to spend you know a ton of money right and so then we look for some affordable options like what joe's talking about or on the used market or something but i think every my belief is that ev everybody can have a nice two channel setup or and or a nice home theater i think you know it needs to become possible. a hobby again right yeah a hobby needs to be like there's a, a low entry point and then it can get crazy yeah. if you want. But a lot of yeah. these guys, like a lot of people I know that they go to these shows, they look at it as if they're a professional, you know, like yeah, right. it's a profession, you know, yeah. I'm a, a fish. I'm an audiophile. Like it's like trying to talk Whatever to a race means. car driver about cars, right? Like it's not going to be fun. You know, this guy's taking it very like too seriously. <laughs> so I think that's, that's Absolutely. the key is have fun. Let these guys know, like 
you know what? Get a system that costs 200 bucks and play with it, open it up, try to figure out how to make it better. Who, you know, just have fun with it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I like you guys all think. See, the, the, to me, this hobby has always been one of the more healthy, beneficial things that anybody could get into that has long lasting effects. Sure. Because music isn't going to go away. No, my car is going to be broke down, but my speakers, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> they're still blasted, you know. <laughs> well, we got to keep it alive. So we're going to do our, our part. You know what I mean? If you, if you support us and, and just let us do what we're doing and share and stuff like that, I think that's all we can really do is we can yeah, just try to right. get the word out there, try to keep it fun. That's what? it. That's we're, we're trying our best. Like one of the things um, I oh, like, same here. Same here, fellas. I'm a small channel, but I'm doing the same. Yeah, cool. What's your channel, by the way? My channel is Regular Guy Audio. Regular I do all kinds audio. of silly non. -butter. Everybody, check that my out. Stuff I put together are just my randomness. I mean, and to keep it fun, I do do weird stuff like, <laughs> let's see how long it's going to take to blow this up. I put a stun gun on a speaker coil once, <laughs> just just to kind of just to see. Very cool, very, very cool. Well, very, for sure, um, you know, check out check out your channel. So, um, what is it again? Regular, regular guy, guy, regular audio. guy, mm -hmm. audio. There it is. Yes, well, sir. Well, thank you for your call, and thanks for always commenting, and thank you for the support. Thank, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you guys for your positivity and for everything you're doing for the audio hobby. Much respect, awesome. fellas. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great take, night. Take care. Take it easy. Bye bye. Um, awesome. I, I think uh, like one of the things I liked or always liked was waiting to get the new speaker, right? Because I started with the two. I'm like, okay, let me look at center channels, mm -hmm. you know. And then like months later, okay, what surrounds am I going to get? You right. know, um, subwoofers. Yeah, I mean, I only need one. I don't need like ten like you. So. I only no, have that's easy. Two. I only have two, which have eighteen inch woofers. <laughs> hey, I only have two that are the equivalent of five. Dude, or I'm telling you guys, one day you guys are gonna fly down, and you're gonna come hang I, out. I, I think, I think we theater. should. I think we should. I think let's, we let's need let's to make a trip out of that. Yeah, you got good food over there. Absolutely, man. So, so. absolutely. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay. We got some hometown Cubans down here. Okay. That sounds like a fun trip. Hey, let's make a Florida trip. You know what there I mean? We're yeah, also, I'm staying at your house though. All right, do it. You have I got, room? I got, I got six theater seats for you. I can. Ah, I just gotta move. I gotta I'll move get, I'll get a hotel. Stuff. I'll get a hotel, Joe. It's all good. With a no, single, you, with with that twin single beds, bed again. With twin beds, if you want. That single bed, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hi Five Vega, what's up? He says, "Love the state of Hi Five Video. Great job, Joe and Techno Dad. What's up, Hi Five Vega? Car oh, holding now. it down for the car audio scene." Yeah, I'm curious what 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 Hi Fi Vega thinks about your subs that you have in. I don't know if you saw the subs that that Michael has in those JTRs, um, two 18s in a sealed yeah. enclosure, huge, two hundred and something, two hundred fifty pounds, two twenty, two twenty. Yeah, and so he has a pair of those, so four 18s in a room. That's not bad, right? Yeah, coming yeah. from a, a car audio guy. I'm sure you know they're used to seeing way like some it'll pretty crazy setups. A little bit. But just kind of curious what he thinks of those. Um, regular. Okay. Why? Well, well, okay. Well, anything else in here in the comments? Any new Atmos? Yeah, I've been yeah. responding to them. Yeah, I've been. I'm not super there. great um, at multitasking, so like I, I'm reading I, comments and replying, and you guys are talking. I'm like, Franco. Sure I'm, um. Atmos demo disc. Atmos Dolby had like a special room. It was an invite only. I'm sure they have a new demo disc for 2020, but we yeah. couldn't get any. I actually got some DTS um 2020 discs. So oddly enough, they're all older movies. So that'd be mm -hmm. interesting to check out. But I did get some to do a giveaway. I got like five or six. I had Joe pick up two. I was picking up two every time we were there. Yeah, that's about <laughs> the only the way desk. you can get them, you yeah. know. So, um but we always try to hook you guys up when we get them. That's for that's exactly what I was just like. Yeah, I just can I get some more from my viewers, please? Yep. And they're like, come back Friday. I was like, oh, it's like yeah, really? I'm yeah. here now. <laughs> just let me get that. Let me cop it. Um. Uh. Okay. Just look. At, so, all about that base. I'm just kind of looking through the comments here. Shake your foundation. 
hey, I saw that video that you posted on yours, Michael, of mm-hmm. the other yeah. person who has a similar um, yes. setup. Okay. And was, is that upstairs? Okay. Because so it was, it was <clears throat> shaking stuff off that table. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I was a little bit afraid, like, how is he going to turn off the sound? Because once he walks away, stuff is going to fall off that table. Yeah. He oh, basically, God. he has his theater room downstairs. That's Scott Newby. And then upstairs above, he's got, I don't know, just another room. And so he's got, he does like get togethers with people. And so they'll come over and, you know, there'll be 15, 20 guys just in his house, just hanging out, listening to it. And so he's like, I mean, he's hitting 140, I think it was 146 decibels. Oh, (laughs) that's, I'll be honest. I have, I don't want to say I have no desire. I have no desire to have that in my theater room. Like I don't, I don't need my entire house shaking and falling apart. Um, but dang, I, I'm flying out there one day. I, I want to check it out. That looks scary. Almost like yeah. if I was upstairs and he was yeah. doing that, I'd yeah. be like, that's, it's, yeah. it's a little bit frightening. Yeah. See all the stuff falling off of your tables. Yeah. Yeah. He will, like, he, like will never, earthquake. he will never have like, um, issues with mice or issues with any cockroaches kind of man dude they're all gone they're like i am not staying in this, this house place, yeah. this house oh. is jacked oh man uh, but yeah man it it was pretty rad like because he had he had sent me that video and of course i'd watched uh some of the other things on his live stream and i was like oh my goodness i said can you send me that video i said i want to use it in mine just a, a sample of it and he said absolutely so he sent it to me and it was cool man definitely pretty cool Hi Five Vega here. He says, he says um, he thought we we're gonna get kicked out of the full cow room. I think yeah. you know what? I think they were about nah, to go. Yeah, we're chill. Like, I think everybody's like, like they looked like they were ready to go out to lunch. They were going to lunch, yeah. But it's we, all we did good, go yeah. late. We did go pretty late. We had an appointment set. We yeah. were pretty late, so that was our fault. Um, what do you guys? What do you guys out there think about us possibly? You know, maybe getting a booth at some of these Hi Fi shows. And maybe doing podcasts and like inviting people in and do and like talking a meet with them. and greet for I, you guys out there as well. You know what I'd love to have? I'd love to have a uh, somebody mentioned this on my, one of my comments is uh, imagine a roundtable discussion with us, but then have people like have somebody from Sound United, have Jill from Clips there yeah, too. That'd be cool. Right? Like from different companies. Yeah. Might be interesting, right? Because yeah. you don't really get to see them interact. I, I'm yeah. kind of curious to see how that would go. Yeah, no, totally. I that that would be great getting people from different companies to like just <laughs> rap with us uh, on the podcast. That's fantastic, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, so let they're it, competing, let right? But know. every time we talk to the other other, they group, all know each other. They're all know? kind of they, they never say anything nasty. They're all no. like, if they say anything bad, it's just like a joke, like a funny thing. That I mean, Phil Phil worked at Sony for like years, you know, mm. and a few other places. So. I mean, it's almost kind of like 90210 in that, you know, everybody's kind of just moving around from spot to spot. It says here, will you guys invite Gene or Shane if they want to join? No, of course, of course not. <laughs> That's because you're scared of Gene's guns, man. His yeah, are yeah. bigger than yours. Joe doesn't so want to get gonna, outgunned. On he's just going to feel intimidated. And... Oh, man. I've been on Gene's. So I've been on Gene's. Um, Gene's been on my channel. Yeah. Oh, he's been on yours. Michael went to his house. Michael yeah. went to his house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I used wrong. to do a bunch of collabs with Shane and yeah. um, Brass Tax back in the day. So what's um, he up to, man? I hadn't seen him in a long time. Brass he kinda... Tax is he's uh, he's he does um, he still puts out videos now. He's just recently started doing, it, but he's not showing his face or anything. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Not so sure I'm, what that's about. I'm mm-hmm. all about busting balls. So if there's some new people to 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 mess around with as yeah. long as they're up for it if they know right. what they're getting yeah. into they, they when gotta, they get in here they gotta be able to take it yeah this is not going to be a technical show you know what i mean yeah. uh, we just enjoy having fun man i think that the key is that we we enjoy just hanging out man really do we enjoy each other's friendship we enjoy learning from each other we learn f- from you guys as well and so we appreciate the when you call in and you know yeah. comments and everything it's a good well, community man it, for sure it is. And um I, I, I hate to be the the pooper. You mm-hmm. do you he's about, he's about to hit the button. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We've been in this for an hour and a half. All right. Let's wrap it up, well, man. Let's wrap it up. Go ahead. Take Thank us out, guys. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by, man. 
Thank you guys. Um, everybody here in the chat, everybody that called in, thank you so much. Uh, this is the Daily Hi Fi Podcast. Hosting today, this week was myself. I'm sure it'll be at Joe's channel or Youth Man's or New Record Days in the coming weeks. Uh, we try to do this every Monday. Try is the, the we try. We've done good <laughs> except for last week. Yeah, last week while Joe and I were in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. So. But uh, again, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for the super chats, and we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Where's the mouse? Here it is. <laughs> nice way to end that. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're still live. Yeah, it's still.